This is an example problem similar to problem 45 in chapter 23 of the survey text. Uh, and in this problem, we have a uniformly charged semicircular ring of length 15 centimeters and total charge of minus 10 microcoulombs. It's facing with its open end toward the positive x-axis. And we're asked to find the electric field at the center of the semicircle. And that would be both the magnitude and the direction of the electric field at the semicircle. First, let's consider the direction of the electric field. Okay. So we're looking for the electric field here at this point in the center. And uh, for the electric field in the y direction, we'll see that due to symmetry, it's going to be zero because we have the same amount of negative charge above the center point, above the x-axis, as we have negative charge below the, the x-axis. So uh, any upward electric field due to this part or downward electric field due to this part down here will be canceled by the upward electric field due to this part up here. So the y component of the electric field at the center point is equal to zero. All right, so let's write that down. The y is equal to zero, and that's due to symmetry. Okay, now how about the x component of the electric field? Well, uh, all of the negative charge is to the left of the center point. The electric field points in the direction of the force that would be experienced by a positive test charge at that point. So if I plopped a positive test charge down at the center of this semicircle, it would be attracted to that negative charge to the left. So that means that the x component of the electric field uh, is going to be to the left or in the minus x direction. Okay, so that takes care of the direction. Now, how about the magnitude? We'll use Coulomb's law in order to figure out the magnitude. And that's that the electric field is equal to the Coulomb constant times Q over R squared where R is the distance from the charge to the point in question. But in this case, we don't just have a point charge. We have a continuous charge distribution. So what we need to do is we need to take one little piece of this continuous charge distribution. And let's call that little piece dQ. What I want to do is I want to find the electric field at that point P right here in the middle. I want to find the contribution of the electric field at that point due just to this little charge element dQ. And I can use Coulomb's law to do that. The contribution of the electric field due to that little piece of charge is equal to K, Coulomb's constant, dQ over R squared, where R is the distance from the center point to the charge element right there. So the di uh, R is that distance right there. Now, once I have that contribution, I can uh, do an integration to add up the contributions of all of the dQs all the way around the semicircle. Uh, but uh, when I do an integral, I can't add x components and y components together. And this equation that I have right here, uh, that is for the entire electric field, not just the x component. So while the total electric field due to the y in the y direction is equal to zero, the com uh, contribution of this little piece, dq, in the y direction is not zero. 
So if I integrated the equation that I have written down right now, I'd be adding up all the x components and all the y components together, and you can't add x's and y's with vectors. You have to add only x's to other x components. All right, so what I really need is the x component of the electric field. To get that, we need to draw the electric field vector. Okay, I'll draw that in red to distinguish it from what we've already drawn. So there we go. Draw that in red. The electric field is pointing in that direction. I need only the x component of it. The x component of it is right here. That little part is d e sub x. Okay. And you can see that that d e sub x is actually equal to DE, the original red vector that I drew right here, times the cosine of theta, where theta is that angle right there. Okay, so we're going to change. Uh, if I want only the x component of the electric field, then I need to multiply all of this by cosine theta. So let's rewrite that. I have dx is equal to k cosine theta dq over r squared. And to get the total electric field, I need to integrate and add up all of the contributions from all of the dqs. So this is uh, when I integrate dex, I get simply dx. Uh, Coulomb's constant k is in fact a constant, so I can pull that outside the integral. The radius of the circle is a constant, so I can pull that outside. And now I'm going to integrate cosine theta dq, and I need to integrate over the entire semicircle. Okay, now we have a problem here because uh, dq and cosine theta, uh, dq does in fact depend on theta. So since theta is a function of q, I can't integrate this as it is. I've got to uh, either get Q in terms of theta or theta in terms of Q. Uh, in order to do that, let's define a linear charge density, lambda, which will equal the total charge Q per unit length L. Okay, that means that Q is equal to lambda L. So dQ is equal to lambda dl, where dl is the length of arc in the ring segment that makes up my dq. Okay, so you know the length of this segment right here that I've colored in blue, that is dl. So this distance right here is dl the arc length of that little piece. Well, uh, the length of any arc of a circle or semicircle is just the radius of the circle times the angle subtended by that arc. In other words, dl is just equal to r d theta. So I can write dq is equal to lambda r d theta. And now I have dq in terms of theta, which is what I needed. So let's substitute uh, this in right there. So we have ex equals k over r squared integral of cosine theta times lambda times r 
T theta. And now I can integrate over theta, because lambda and R are constant. I can bring them outside the integral. And now I have the integral of cosine theta d theta. If I integrate over the entire semicircle, then I am integrating from theta equals minus pi over 2 up to pi over 2. And so that's from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we're almost finished. If you integrate cosine theta, you get sine theta. You pull the r out, the r cancels, so that we get e x is equal to lambda k over r times sine theta. And we evaluate that from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. When we do that, we get uh, EX equals 2 lambda K over R. Now, lambda wasn't in the original problem. If we want to put this in terms of what was in the original problem, then we'll substitute this in for lambda. Okay, and I'm going to erase some of the things in the middle of the screen here because we're running out of room. Okay. So, uh, if we substitute in Q over L for lambda, then we have that the electric field in the X direction, which is in fact the entire electric field, because it has no y component, is 2q k over l times r. Right? And r, uh, we can write in terms of l. Uh, R is the original uh, length over 2 pi, or excuse me, L over uh, pi, since um, I got that from the circumference, 2 pi R um, is equal to 2 L, because right, it's a semicircle, so if half of the circle is L, then the whole circle is 2L. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi R. So that's how I got this R equals L over 2 pi. So I'm going to substitute that in down here for R. And my final answer is that the electric field is 2QK over L, L over pi which simplifies to 2 pi q k over l squared. If you plug in the numbers that I'm using, then you get 2.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb, or if you have different numbers in your version of the problem, then uh, you can plug those into that equation.